throw a lot more money at what seems to be a lot bigger a problem. Ron Paul, the Texas congressman and former presidential candidate, says that would be a big mistake. The congressman joins me right now. Congressman, what do you make of that? Well, I think uh, you're absolutely right. Throwing more money at it won't help it. And unfortunately, even though I'm sure our president's well intended to pick up the momentum and do something about this, the United States is on the defensive. We are being blamed, and I think to a large degree rightfully so. And this was a predictable event. You know, early on in 1944, uh, many economists recognized it was a flawed system and predicted the Bretton Woods would break down, which it did in 1971. But the dollar reserve standard, which was started in 1971, was deeply flawed as well, and it's coming to an end. And this is what we have to understand. This is the end of a major monetary system that has existed for these 30-some years, and it will not be changed easily. It's not going to be changed this weekend we have a long yeah but, but congressman I, I i know what you're saying that you know this is a, a great test maybe a declining if not defining one for the dollar but i think part of the president's message is we're hurting in the united states but truth be told you're hurting more uh wouldn't that be something that would represent some strength for us because by comparison we actually look pretty good including our dollar what do you make of that yeah, yes, to a degree. We have economic wealth and we have the military might, and believe it or not, military might does something to boost up your currency. But I don't, I don't believe that uh, we're the strong superpower that we used to be. The handwriting is on the wall. We can't so let me, find let me, the uh, situation. All right, I apologize. But I'm getting ahead of a president's uh, radio address, so I don't want to bump you or him. Uh, but one uh, issue I want to explore with you, Congressman, is this idea that Gordon Brown of Britain have been talking about maybe a coordinated uh, global tax cut. I'm vastly oversimplifying it, but the gist was that maybe they, the leaders gathering uh, at this table should be looking at that. What do you make of that? Well, I think you said tax cut, but do you mean an interest rate cut? Uh, but a tax cut would be fine. A coordinated tax cut is fine. But an interest rate cut that's coordinated just means we're going to print money together and ho hopefully we can well, devalue I, I all the currency. Well, I think he was uh, I, right. He's looking to do both. But more interestingly, and you're right, when it comes to interest rate cuts, we don't have much more wiggle room on in interest rates. They're all <laughs> right, low. Well, uh, we're down They're to down to near now. zero here. All right. But, <laughs> okay. but having said that, uh, what do you make of the idea that uh, I'll be talking to uh, Tony Fratto from the White House on this notion that, uh, the White House position on this, this is a country-by-country country type issue. Uh, you can't coordinate this type of thing. I think that's the gist of it, but I'll ask Tony that. But let, let, let me get your take as to whether that might be another weapon in the, uh, in the arsenal that we haven't explored enough. Well, if it's government coordination, it won't work because they don't know how to do it. Only the market can coordinate. You have to have the rules of the marketplace, supply and demand and sound money, low interest and low taxes and all these things. Markets coordinate very, very well. It's when governments get involved and tell you what the money supply should be and what the interest rate should be and how much spending should be. The people should be spending the money. The government shouldn't be spending the money. Sure, the government can spend a lot more money, but they're not smart enough to know how to spend the money. So the more money the government <laughs> spends and Washington appropriate, the less the people have. Have. And we need the people right now, they're anxious to cut back, which they should. They shouldn't extend credit. They should start saving money and the bad debt liquidated. But we're doing everything conceivable to prevent the market from working to straighten out this mess. So I'm discouraged, of, uh, of course, from what all I hear, whether it's what we do in the Congress, what we might do next week with a, more stimul a bigger stimulus package, and what they're doing this weekend. But nobody's hardly even talking about the central bankers. They're not even there. They're the ones who have all the clout and they're overseas meeting and you know under the law it says that we're not even allowed to know what our central bankers say to other central bankers. That, to me, is, uh, is unbelievable. We shouldn't have it that way. Well, we should know what the central bankers are doing. And that's where the real action is right now. All right, Congressman. Uh, that's such an interesting subject. We'll have to pick up for a separate conversation. But always a pleasure having you. Thank you. All right, Ron Paul. All right, we're telling you, uh, 